Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the weekly report. Neocons demand crushing sanctions on Russia. You can always count on the neocons in Congress to ignore reality, ignore evidence, and ignore common sense in their endless drive to get us involved in another war. Last week, for example, Senators John McCain, Lindsey Graham, and Bob Menendez and others joined up to introduce what Senator Graham called the sanctions bill from hell aimed at applying crushing sanctions on Russia. Senator Graham bragged that the bill would include everything but the kitchen sink in its attempt to ratchet up tensions with Russia. Senator Cory Gardner, Republican from Colorado, bragged that the new sanctions bill includes my language requiring the State Department to determine whether Russia merits the designation of a state sponsor of terror. Does he even know what the word terrorism means? Senator Ben Cardin, Democrat from Maryland, warns that the bill must be passed to strengthen our resolve against Vladimir Putin's pattern of corroding democratic institutions and values around the world, a direct and growing threat to U.S. national security. What has Russia done that warrants kitchen sink sanctions that will crush the country and possibly designate it as a sponsor of terrorism? Senator Menendez tells us the Kremlin continues to attack our democracy, support a war criminal in Syria, and violate Ukraine's sovereignty. There's a big problem with these accusations on Russia. They're based on outright lies and unproven accusations that continue to get more bizarre with each retelling. How strange that when U.S. senators like Menendez demand that we stand by our NATO allies, even if it means war, they attack Russia for doing the same in Syria. Is the Syrian president a war criminal as Menendez claims? We do know that his army is finally, with Russian and Iranian help, about to defeat ISIS and Al-Qaeda, which, with U.S. backing for seven years, have turned Syria into a smoking ruin. Does Menendez and his allies prefer ISIS in charge of Syria? And how hypocritical for Menendez to talk about Russia's violating Ukraine's sovereignty. The unrest in Ukraine was started by the 2014 U.S.-backed coup against an elected leader. We have that all on tape. How is Russia attacking our democracy? We're still waiting for any real evidence that Russia was involved in our 2016 elections and intends to become involved in our 2018 election. But that doesn't stop the propagandists who claim with no proof that Russia was behind the election of Donald Trump. These senators claim that sanctions will bring the Russians to heel, but they are wrong. Sanctions are good at two things only, destroying the lives of innocent civilians and leading to war. As I mentioned in an episode of my Liberty Report last week, even our own history shows that sanctions do lead to war and should not be taken lightly. In the run-up to U.S. involvement in the War of 1812, the U.S. was doing business with both France and the U.K., which were at war with each other. When the U.K. decided that the U.S. was favoring France in its commerce, it imposed sanctions on the U.S. What did Washington do in response? Declared war. Hence, the War of 1812, which most Americans remember as that time when the British burned down the White House. Recent polls show that the majority of Americans approve of President Trump's recent meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Among Republicans, a vast majority support the meeting. Perhaps a good defeat in November will wake these neocon warmongers up. Let's hope so. Thanks for listening.